Hello and welcome to Quick Charge by Electrek. Keeping you in the fast track with daily Tesla and electric vehicle news. I'm Mikey G and it's Wednesday, December 1st. Tesla's center display is showing a massive performance improvement with the new AMD Ryzen chip. As we reported last week, Tesla started deliveries of the Model Y Performance in China and they replaced the Intel Atom chip that currently powers the center display with the new AMD chip. And we got to look at a side-by-side -side comparison. Chinese media channel 42how.com and the host, Kai Xiang, found that opening a video website took 7 seconds with the new chip and 24 seconds with the Intel Atom. They further tested scrolling and map features, finding it to be much, much faster. Hopefully we will see this new AMD chip in cars coming to the USA. Tesla was again found guilty of throttling supercharging speed on early Model S vehicles. Back in 2019, we reported on several reports of Tesla owners seeing significant drops in range from 12 to 30 miles following a software update. On top of the range loss, the DC fast charging rate of supercharger stations also was reduced. The problem led to a series of lawsuits in different markets for Tesla to compensate the affected owners. In Norway, Tesla was found guilty of throttling supercharger speeds over this issue and was asked to pay the equivalent of $16,000 to each affected owner. Tesla saw a retrial saying that they were unaware of the first one, and after that was granted, Tesla had a chance to share their story. Nonetheless, the company was found guilty and was asked to pay a slightly smaller amount, equating to $14,319.71. Tesla's head of AI has released new footage of the automaker's auto-labeling tool for the full self-driving effort. Part of the challenge for Tesla's full self-driving software is accurately identifying and labeling the objects that the cameras can see. What started as a few dozen employees manually entering labels grew to thousands, and the company is also working on an automatic system to aid the human push start. With a new series of tweets, Andre Karpathy, Tesla's head of AI and computer vision, released images of labeling tool. The images show what looks like a colorful painted street scene with purple tinted roads, teal gutters, and pink sidewalks. Humans are red with bold outlines and cars blue with nice bold outlines. Based on the limited still photos, it appears that the environmental identification is quite clean. Of course, they were also taken on a bright clear day. General Motors announced a joint venture with Posco Chemical, are going to build a new factory in North America to process cathode active material for use in batteries. The yet to be determined North American facility will be focused on processing the material, which represents roughly 40% of the total cost of an EV battery. Although the current agreement with GM is a non binding term sheet, POSCO CEO Kyung Soon Min called it a close partnership and said he is pleased to participate. The new material processing facility for EV batteries is expected to open in 2024. Mercedes-Benz has unveiled an off-road electric vehicle concept called Project Maybach, and it looks pretty wild. It's doubtful that this vehicle or anything like it will ever see the light of day. For those of you listening in, it looks like the lower body of a 70s Rolls-Royce expanded for off-road tires. The upper body consists of windows from a coupe sport car caged in roll bars. The wheelbase looks about 12 feet long, and I'm not sure how well that would perform off-road. Electrek Seth Weintraub takes a spin in the Porsche Taycan GTS. Having driven several of the Porsche Taycans, he sums up his experience saying, quote, It lives between the turbo and the 4S in terms of speed and performance, but it's a lot closer to the turbo if I had to guess. I don't think Porsche has given enough credit for the Taycan interior. The seats completely envelop you, padding you somewhat from all the lateral G's that would have me sliding over the passenger seat of my Model 3. He went on to say, quote, I came away from the Porsche event thinking to myself, could I possibly justify spending $130,000 on a car? For those of you who can, the Porsche Taycan GTS is a thrill to ride, even before you get to the track. The average cost of EV batteries has fallen consistently over the last year. This is based on Bloomberg NEF's annual battery price survey. In an updated version of the survey, they write, quote, Lithium-ion battery pack prices, which were above $1,200 per kilowatt hour in 2010, have fallen 89% in real terms to $132 per kilowatt hour in 2021. This is a 6% drop from $140 per kilowatt hour in 2020. 
Continuing cost reductions bode well for the future of electric vehicles, which rely on lithium-ion technology. However, the report goes on to rain on their own parade, saying, quote, Higher raw material prices mean that in the near term, average pack prices could rise to $135 per kilowatt hour in 2022 in nominal terms. In the absence of other improvements that can mitigate this impact, this could mean that the point at which prices fall below $100 per kilowatt hour could be pushed back by two years. Today's community comment comes from Martin Woods, who writes, quote, Just read the Electric article titled, Three Things I Learned on a Rural Florida Road Trip in My Tesla Model 3 by Michelle Lewis. The article highlights the problem of broken superchargers, which may not be known to Tesla. Can't understand why no one has asked Elon to get his software team to write an app which allows Tesla owners to report broken superchargers. It would make the ownership experience so much better. Of course, having a customer service department would solve this problem too. Or how about a dedicated phone line just to report these issues? A Tesla supercharger network is probably the main reason why people buy Tesla over any other brand. This is why I've ordered a Model Y for the UK, delivery sometime in the new year. All right, congratulations on your new car, by the way. Allowing users to report busted superchargers would be fantastic. Honestly, I kind of assumed that something like that already existed, but I don't think I've ever used a supercharger, so I can't speak from experience. Perhaps Tesla is relying on their own view of power flow to determine where they send technicians? I don't know, I'm just kind of guessing. Busted superchargers rarely, if ever, make the news, but it can be a critical point for the experience. In the future, I think that Tesla will dodge this bullet in public opinion, since everyone just kind of takes for granted that the network is already huge and the outages will have a hard time getting through to the press. Also in the future, I think that Rivian will be on the hook for this very issue. Rivian has strategically placed their chargers in remote places, and if one of them goes down, it could very well sully the reputation on such a simple issue. Thanks for watching Quick Charge by Electrek. We also have an audio version on your favorite podcast player. I'm Mikey G, and I hope you have a great day.